Squaring the circle. Squaring the circle is a problem proposed by ancient geometers. It is the challenge of constructing a square with the same area as a given circle by using only a finite number of steps with compass and straightage. The difficulty of the problem raised the question of whether specified axioms of Euclidean geometry concerning the existence of lines and circles implied the existence of such a square. In 1882, the task was proven to be impossible, as a consequence of the lindemann weyer stress theorem, which proves that pi p is a transcendental, rather than an algebraic, irrational number. It had been known for decades that the construction would be impossible if p were transcendental, but p was not proven to be transcendental until 1882. Approximate squaring to any given non-perfect accuracy, in contrast, is possible in a finite number of steps, since there are rational numbers arbitrarily close to p. The expression squaring the circle is sometimes used as a metaphor for trying to do the impossible. The term quadrature of the circle is sometimes used to mean the same thing as squaring the circle, but it may also refer to approximate or numerical methods for finding the area of a circle. History Impossibility The solution of the problem of squaring the circle by compass and straightage requires the construction of the number p. If p is constructible, it follows from standard constructions that p would also be constructible. In 1837, Pierre Wanzel showed that lengths that could be constructed with compass and straightage had to be solutions of certain polynomial equations with rational coefficients. Thus, constructible lengths must be algebraic numbers. If the problem of the quadrature of the circle could be solved using only compass and straightage, then p would have to be an algebraic number. Johann Heinrich Lambert conjectured that p was not algebraic, that is, a transcendental number, in 1761. He did this in the same paper in which he proved its irrationality, even before the general existence of transcendental numbers had been proven. It was not until 1882 that Ferdinand von Lindemann proved the transcendence of P and so showed the impossibility of this construction. The transcendence of P implies the impossibility of exactly circling the square as well as of squaring the circle. It is possible to construct a square with an area arbitrarily close to that of a given circle. If a rational number is used as an approximation of p, then squaring the circle becomes possible, depending on the values chosen. However, this is only an approximation and does not meet the constraints of the ancient rules for solving the problem. Several mathematicians have demonstrated workable procedures based on a variety of approximations. Bending the rules by introducing a supplemental tool, allowing an infinite number of compass and straightage operations, or by performing the operations in certain non-Euclidean geometries also makes squaring the circle possible in some sense. For example, the quadratrix of Hippias provides the means to square the circle, and also to trisect an arbitrary angle, as does the Archimedean spiral. Although the circle cannot be squared in Euclidean space, it sometimes can be in hyperbolic geometry under suitable interpretations of the terms. As there are no squares in the hyperbolic plane, their role needs to be taken by regular quadrilaterals, meaning quadrilaterals with all sides congruent and all angles congruent, but these angles are strictly smaller than right angles. There exist in the hyperbolic plane countably infinitely many pairs of constructible circles and constructible regular quadrilaterals of equal area, which, however, are constructed simultaneously. There is no method for starting with a regular quadrilateral and constructing the circle of equal area, and there is no method for starting with a circle and constructing a regular quadrilateral of equal area even when the circle has small enough radius such that a regular quadrilateral of equal area exists. Modern approximative constructions Though squaring the circle with perfect accuracy is an impossible problem using only compass and straightage, approximations to squaring the circle can be given by constructing lengths close to p. It takes only minimal knowledge of elementary geometry to convert any given rational approximation of p into a corresponding compass and straightage construction but constructions made in this way tend to be very long-winded in comparison to the accuracy they achieve. 
after the exact problem was proven unsolvable. Some mathematicians applied their ingenuity to finding elegant approximations to squaring the circle, defined roughly and informally as constructions that are particularly simple among other imaginable constructions that give similar precision. Construction by Kachansky Construction by Jacob de Gelder Construction by Hobson Among the modern approximate constructions was one by E. W. Hobson in 1913. This was a fairly accurate construction which was based on constructing the approximate value of 3.14 million, 164,079, which is accurate to three decimal places, i.e., it differs from p by about 4.8 and 5. We find that gh equals r 177,246, and since p backslash display style backslash sqrt backslash pi equals 177,000. 245 we see that gh is greater than the side of the square whose area is equal to that of the circle by less than two hundred thousandths of the radius hobson does not mention the formula for the approximation of p in his construction the above illustration shows hobson's construction with continuation constructions by ramanujan construction using the golden ratio squaring or quadrature as integration Finding the area under a curve, known as integration in calculus or quadrature in numerical analysis, was known as squaring before the invention of calculus. Since the techniques of calculus were unknown, it was generally presumed that a squaring should be done via geometric constructions, that is, by compass and straightage. For example, Newton wrote to Oldenburg in 1676, I believe M. Leibniz will not dislike the theorem towards the beginning of my letter PAG, for for squaring curved lines geometrically emphasis added. After Newton and Leibniz invented calculus, they still referred to this integration problem as squaring a curve. Claims of circle squaring Connection with the longitude problem the mathematical proof that the quadrature of the circle is impossible using only compass and straightage has not proved to be a hindrance to the many people who have invested years in this problem anyway. Having squared the circle is a famous crank assertion. See also pseudo-mathematics. In his old age, the English philosopher Thomas Hobbes convinced himself that he had succeeded in squaring the circle a claim that was refuted by John Wallace as part of the Hobbes-Wallace controversy. During the 18th and 19th century, the notion that the problem of squaring the circle was somehow related to the longitude problem seems to have become prevalent among would-be circle squarers. Using cyclometer for circle squarer, Augustus de Morgan wrote in 1872, Montucla says, speaking of France, that he finds three notions prevalent among cyclometers. 1. That there is a large reward offered for success. 2. That the longitude problem depends on that success. 3. That the solution is the great end and object of geometry. The same three notions are equally prevalent among the same class in England. No reward has ever been offered by the government of either country. Although from 1714 to 1828 the British government did indeed sponsor a £20,000 price for finding a solution to the longitude problem, exactly why the connection was made to squaring the circle is not clear, especially since two non-geometric methods, the astronomical method of lunar distances and the mechanical chronometer, had been found by the late The Board of Longitude received many proposals, including determining longitude by squaring the circle, though the board did not take any notice of it. De Morgan goes on to say that the longitude problem in no way depends upon perfect solution, existing approximations are sufficient, to a point of accuracy far beyond what can be wanted. In his book, De Morgan also mentions receiving many threatening letters from would-be circle squarers, accusing him of trying to cheat them out of their prize. Other modern claims, even after it had been proved impossible, in 1894, amateur mathematician Edwin J. Goodwin claimed that he had developed a method to square the circle. 
The technique he developed did not accurately square the circle and provided an incorrect area of the circle, which essentially redefined pi as equal to 3.2. Goodwin then proposed the Indiana Pi Bill in the Indiana State Legislature, allowing the state to use his method in education without paying royalties to him. The bill passed with no objections in the State House, but the bill was tabled and never voted on in the Senate amid increasing ridicule from the press. The mathematical crank Carl Theodore Heisel also claimed to have squared the circle in his 1934 book, Behold, the Grand Problem No Longer Unsolved, The Circle Squared Beyond Refutation. Paul Helmos referred to the book as a classic crank book. In 1851, John Parker published a book Quadrature of the Circle in which he claimed to have squared the circle. His method actually produced an approximation of p accurate to six digits. In literature, the problem of squaring the circle has been mentioned by poets such as Dante and Alexander Pope with varied metaphorical meanings. Its literary use dates back at least to 414 BC, when the play The Birds by Aristophanes was first performed. In it, the character Meton of Athens mentions squaring the circle, possibly to indicate the paradoxical nature of his utopian city. Dante's Paradise, Canto Roman 33, lines 133-135, for Dante, squaring the circle represents a task beyond human comprehension, which he compares to his own inability to comprehend paradise. By 1742, when Alexander Pope published the fourth book of his Dunciad, attempts at circle squaring had come to be seen as wild and fruitless. Similarly, the Gilbert and Sullivan comic opera Princess Ida features a song which satirically lists the impossible goals of the women's university run by the title character, such as finding perpetual motion. One of these goals is, and the circle, they will square it slash some fine day, the Sestina, a poetic form first used in the 12th century by Arnott Daniel, has been said to square the circle in its use of a square number of lines, six stanzas of six lines, each with a circular scheme of six repeated words. Spano's 1978 writes that this form invokes a symbolic meaning in which the circle stands for heaven and the square stands for the earth. A similar metaphor was used in squaring the circle, a 1908 short story by O. Henry about a long-running family feud. In the title of this story, the circle represents the natural world, while the square represents the city, the world of man. In later works, circle squares such as Leopold Bloom in James Joyce's novel Ulysses and Lawyer Paravent, in Thomas Mann's The Magic Mountain are seen as sadly deluded, or as unworldly dreamers, unaware of its mathematical impossibility and making grandiose plans for a result they will never attain.